News 46, local coverage you can count on. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Mark Bonstein, otherwise better known as Staff Sergeant B. We'll get to my guest in a minute who's having flashbacks of the cadence. So <laughs> we're going to do our military history on uh, August 18th. What happened? In uh, 1838, six U.S. Navy ships departed Hampton Road, led by Lieutenant Charles Watkins, on a three-year mission. And in 1944, in the Army, the U.S. 7th Army continued advancements on the north direction of the Gap. And in the Marines in 1965, 5,500 Marines destroyed a Viet Cong stronghold. So, didn't hear about any casualties. With that, my guest was a, another Marine, got out as a Lance Corporal, a welcome Mike Wilson. Thanks, sir. Welcome to Semper Fi. So give us a little background about yourself. Uh, Joined the Marine Corps day after uh, Beirut. Really? Is uh, that what inspired you? Pretty much. I uh, got tired of uh, <laughs> everything that was going on in the Middle East, and, and that was kind of the icing on the cake, I guess. And was it the bombing? The, yeah, the, the, yeah the actual bombing of the embassy. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and uh, listed in the, well, enlisted then, and then uh, joined, uh, or was at MCRD San Diego on January 8th, I believe, is when I got there. And uh, three-month boot camp there, and then off to my uh, primary MOS, which was uh, 0311. Basic grunt. Basic grunt. Um, <laughs> funny story there, though. Uh, supposed to be a, a guaranteed contract Marine as a air winger, 53 mech. And uh, evidently, headquarters Marine Corps thought it best that I go to infantry training school. So uh, I, I guess what they call a mech leg program is, is a... Um, it's uh, based on you know various MOSs, has various MOSs. You can be a guaranteed contract, but you might be a cook, you might be a baker, you might be motor transport. Yeah, that's the first I ever heard admin. of that MOS. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know that it was actually per se an MOS. It was just it was it was, it was some sort of guaranteed contract program. Um, really? Yeah, and I guess the you know, the old recruiters, as we as we know them sometimes, uh, <laughs> failed to. Let enlighten me, you about that. Enlighten me about the fact that, yeah, there was, uh, you know, well, you could be this, but you could be this and this and this and this as well. So uh, third phase boot camp, uh, third month in boot camp, I, you know, and they're reading out everybody's names and MOSs, and they're like, uh, Wilson, yo, 0311 I'm all, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Don't remember that one. But, uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I ended up at uh, infantry training school, uh, which... I want to say it was like 28 days, a month, something like that. It was like, an, I thought it was an additional eight weeks. Infantry training was still at San Onofre. San Onofre, uh, and in my time, and in I think probably yours, it was called Infantry Training School at yeah. that time. School ITS. of Infantry. Yeah, now it's School of Infantry, and before our, before our time it was uh, uh, ITR, Infantry yeah. Training Yeah, Infantry Regiment, right. But, uh, yeah, so I was, well, I was there, and then, had to wait for two weeks for all the reservists to go through because they were pushing them through first. They needed to make sure that they got them through and sent them home and you know got them back to doing whatever their civilian job was. So we're sitting in the barracks going like this and receiving going, hmm. For how much longer did you have to wait from them to finish for you guys to finally get picked up? Uh, for me, it was about two weeks. Really? Yeah. They just put you on working parties or? Yeah. you. Uh, <clears throat> From what I recall, uh, you know, you had some phone watch or, you know. Duty NCO. Duty NCO or you might have, you know, did something in the chow hall or something of that nature and then ended up, you know, uh, majority of the time just in the gym working out or, you know, going to, you know, the local library there at Onifre or, which in the, they were all Quonset huts. Yeah. You know, but. Um, yeah, so San Onifre was the furthest, almost seemed like the furthest. I think after that was a recon battalion was out there. 
I passed on a free. Yeah, yeah, up north. Near, yeah, Far going in. towards the uh, nuclear power plant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right next door to it. Yeah, we. Uh, yeah, even I, even in boot camp, we uh, walked along the beaches down on that end uh, when we were there for uh, RF, RFTD, I think it was. Yeah, what we called it back in the day. Well, you were there for for. I don't remember how long it was uh, at the rifle range. When yeah, had two weeks. Yeah, two one weeks. One week of snap-in, one week of qualification. Right, right. And then they implemented the mess and maintenance in there. I don't know if they still did it, but, you know, we yeah. had to do. Within that two weeks, you did the white rifle qualification. Then you were either painting the rocks or picking up butts or working in the chow hole. Mm -hmm. Then we did our qualification. Then we went back to our unit, yep. and everything was you know, back to the way it was. Yeah, yeah, that's where we, uh, we, we spent our mess maintenance there at, uh, at uh, Edson Range. Right. And uh, I, uh, I got picked to do maintenance. I got which, put on mess duty. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd have rather had the, well, the maintenance duty I had was, was pretty, was pretty skate, as we called it back in the day. Um, I was sorting out flak jackets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you take out various, and, and they were just piles of them. I mean, I don't know what they were doing, but they were just, here, throw them in there, we'll get to them later. But uh, I remember, you know, basically, you know, all our drill instructors are gone, you know, except for the main drill instructor who's there on duty. You know, obviously there's got to be one there, you know. Right. But he's usually the... back, yeah, he's usually doing his thing wherever because he knows yeah. you're being taken care of by Marines, so. But I remember being there with these 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 Marines in this in this warehouse, and uh, they ordered pizza, and they kept trying to get me to eat it. I was like, oh, no, 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 not this guy. You're not going to fool me, you know, because I'm thinking I'm thinking there's you know there's going to be something happen here if I eat a pizza, you know. It's, <laughs> it's not chow hall food. No, 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 no. Yeah. Go ahead and eat. I'm like. Uh, all due respect, sir. No, no, thanks. I'm, I'm not hungry. I, that's an order. Eat it, I said, sir. I, 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 you know, respectfully, I, I don't think I should. I'm going to tell you one last time. <laughs> you know, otherwise, you know, push-ups or whatever. I was, you know, I'm thinking all this stuff in my head. He's like, ah, just go ahead and eat it. You know, you're, you're, you're fine. You know, you're off. This is your yeah, free yeah. time away from, you know, whatever. And I'm like. Is my drill instructor around here somewhere? Yeah, well, you're I'm, thinking I'm of the just waiting any minute. You know, this guy's the ratification. Come. Yeah, I'm gonna. Well, he had a up. slice too. Like, oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. <laughs> Down, give me. Sir, 20. the private said no for it. I thought, oh, shut up. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But uh, yeah, so uh, you know, yeah, not to bounce back and forth, but uh, yeah, so I did my time there at uh, ITS, and uh, it was like 31 May, I think it was. I left and. Uh, and joined up with my my duty station, uh, which is where I spent the remainder of my time uh, at Mare Island Naval Base, Marine Barracks. Okay. And I believe I heard you on another show uh, saying something about this time and day at uh, Mare Island. Uh, they transferred uh, the first boot camp, yeah. first Marine Corps boot camp, which was 1917 through 1922. The, the next prior, the next year, 1923, they transferred it to, to San, Diego. San Diego. Right. But there was actually four <clears throat> boot camps started at that time. There was really? um, Puget Sound, there was Philadelphia, and Norfolk. And Norfolk later became uh, Paris Island. So, but Mare Island was, yeah, was one of the first the original boot camps really? on, the, on the West Coast. Yeah. Boy, something I didn't get to find in my notes. Oh, I'll go back and look. <laughs> Well, Where'd you find it? <laughs> well, no, I I I, uh, I do a lot of history research and a lot of research for for Mare Island um, and Marine Barracks and the, and the Marines that were at Marine Barracks. Uh, I've held two reunions for for Mare Island Marines uh, here just just recently, as of uh, 2000 or was it last year? Last year was, we had one here in Vegas at the Leatherneck Club. Um, but yeah, we're the old barracks is still still there. Um, it's a lot of overgrowth. Um, the island's been bought by uh, Lennar Homes, and they're, they were initially going to take it and turn it into condominiums. Oh, really? But uh, they've since, I guess, filed bankruptcy, and so now it's kind of in limbo, and we're trying to you know, see if we can find some investors and get it back and turn it back to the way it was, slash you know, kind of a marine uh, bed and breakfast slash museum. And, Put a recruiting station in there, and you know, I mean, this we were pretty self-sufficient. You know, we had yeah. uh, we had our own chow hall, Chesties, uh, had a li library, TV room, um, 
shooting range in the, in the, in the basement, uh, pistol range. No. Um, but we had a basketball court, weight room, <clears throat> brig. I mean, we had it all <laughs> right there in this barracks, you know. So you were on barracks duty. Barracks duty. I did barracks duty in the Philippines. 8151, Marine Security Guard. Yeah. Fun and times. Yeah, and there's some, there's some you know, you, you talk to a lot of these uh, fast company Marines, which is kind of what took over. You know, from Marine, or from Marine Barracks duty. Say, I it's I, I want to say it's the same MOS, um, and we were in fact called Marine Security Guard yeah. back then. But so were they. Yeah. You know, they were MSG, so they they're like, hey, you're MSG, you're 8151, but you're Marine Barracks. It, it's you know, kind of that old core, new core. You kind of tell the new new guys, well, you know, know yes, is, yeah. You know, and then. <clears throat> You know, wearing uh, MP badges. We didn't wear the MPs. I said we have all the same rights other than arresting powers. We didn't wear the MPs. That's why they. That's why they eventually. You know, told yeah, that, us that was '78, though. Yeah, they told us no more of that. Uh, yeah. We didn't have any formal training. It was OJT. It's, it's exactly. You know, they, these they, are your read your deadly orders. Yep. Stand that gate. Yep. And the sergeant of the guard or the corporal guard would tell you to fill in the blanks. Okay, you got any questions? Here's what you're doing. There was no formal school. Yep. They said, strap this on, go to the clearing barrel, lock and load, get in the van. Absolutely. Report your post, on with the old, out with the new. And that's all we did. Four hours. Four, four on, four off. Uh, and then you did your weekends, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And uh, yeah. I tried to, I always tried to do the, the eights. I'd find somebody that, you know, I'd want to stay out there for a full eight and then get eight off because you were trying to find some way to get some sleep somehow. Yeah. Because when you were off those four hours, you were either field day in the barracks, radio, uh, 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 phone watch, or at Mare Island. I don't know if, what it was in the Philippines, but we had uh, reactionary force. I was just going to say, did you ever do reacts? Yep. <clears throat> we, had a, we had a little barracks room, and there were six, three bunk beds, and we had to sleep yep. on our uniforms yep. and our gas mask on. And there was a fire alarm down there. Mm -hmm. And it was almost guaranteed every night a react would be sounded. And we always had to go to one part of the base every night. So once again, like you were saying, sleep apnea was very, uh, <laughs> sleep deprivation, I'm sorry, sleep it was very, yeah. very common. Yeah, we, uh, we uh, didn't have quite such a good name with, with some of the, uh, the commanders of the boats uh, down in the shipyard. Uh, get a bunch of Marines, especially if they're all tired and cranky anyway. But... Uh, we get called to go down to the sub and find, you know, whatever it was that was on the sub that, you know, we were supposed to find, you know, a bomb or, you know, whatever. And helmet and full react gear and shotguns and we're banging up against things and knocking things over, <laughs> breaking knobs. And <laughs> these guys are just like, that's it, done, get off the boat. <laughs> and then going down, you know, some of those doggone, uh, what they call them back in the day, the, those stairways. And those guys, wells. yeah, those guys are sliding down them, you know, exactly like this. Like we got our full gear. We're like, that's not going to happen. You missing know? every other step. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's why we had the brain buckets, you know. <laughs> Beating your head as you're going down. But, uh, yeah, it was interesting. Uh, uh, now, how long was barracks duty for you? I was there, like I say, my entire time. Uh, my Marine really? Corps, my, my Marine Corps career was cut short uh, for medical reasons. Um, but... Uh, the majority of the guys that I was there with, um, they changed the mission in 86 and de-established the barracks in 86. So the majority of those Marines that were there when I was there stayed there until their enlistment was up in 88. Yeah, we were only allowed to do a year enlistment. You can extend another year. Yeah. That's all we were authorized. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. And so get a cup of coffee and join us, and we'll finish hearing uh, Mike has anything else on about barracks duty. <laughs> <laughs> no, we got some stories with the. Welcome back to Simplify. Speaking with my guest, Mike Wilson, who's still having his flashbacks from his <laughs> cadence. 
lock on his heels. Okay, so uh, got a lot in common with the barracks duty thing. So <clears throat> we both had to respond to fights in our enlisted clubs, and uh, you had a. Uh, we yeah we uh, yeah it wasn't a response. I, I guess in, in so many words as, as it was, I was actually on the gate. Um, for those that have, have gone through the gates at uh, uh, many naval stations or, or marine installations and the, and the guards that are on them, uh, we have a random vehicle search uh, number that's, that's given to us during the day. And uh, I don't know, this must have been zero dark 30, 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. We had some Navy SEALs come through. Um, they were up there for something there at Mare Island and uh, they fell on the, on the vehicle search. Uh, supposedly, um, I was the junior lance corporal on the, on the outbound lane, so I don't I don't know if it was or wasn't. But uh, so the the senior lance corporal goes to the inbound or to the do the vehicle search. I go to the inbound lane, put the cone in the outbound lane, and uh, a couple of guys exit the vehicle and they go up to the corporal of the guard shack, and I'm watching cars and watching the corporal of the guard shack. Next thing I know. My corporal of the guard is pulling this guy through the window, and they're going at it in the window. <laughs> the rest <laughs> of the guys exit the car. They jump on the, the, the senior lance corporal, who's now a retired master, or retired master sergeant. And uh, I'm, I'm standing there like, oh, all right. Threw the cone down in the inbound lane, and I go and proceed to get into it with him. And you know, before you know, we got a free for all. There's three of us, four, including one of the, the uh, Mare Island police uh, studs, as we called him, he was a huge guy, <laughs> handy with a nightstick, and, and we're going at it. But uh, long story short, the next morning we're standing tall before the base commander, and he's reading us the riot act, the SEALs, the riot act, our uh, commanding officer, the XO, the first sergeant, our guard chief, uh, the, uh, our lieutenant, we're all standing there at attention. No parade rest, and this base commander is just handing this to us. And just kind of like being in, you know, a kid in school back in my day, if you got in trouble at school, when you got back to the barracks, we got into it again. And we're standing tall in front of the CO, the XO, the first sergeant, the guard chief, and the whole nine yards. And uh, again, long story short, you know, we, they read us the riot act and, and again asked us, you know, was that the, the random vehicle search? Was that the actual number? Oh, Roger that, sir. You know, we're, we're, sticking to, we're sticking to the story. And he goes, all right, well, off the record, you know, who got the better of who out there? Why, we did, sir. <laughs> and we were all, you know, we were all pretty well beat up. But um, he's like, you know, just get out of my office. I don't want to see you guys, you know, for the rest of the day. Just get out of here. But, uh, so, yeah, it was, you know, it was one of our, it was one of our <coughs> barracks uh, main gate stories so nobody got relieved or nobody got relieved or busted uh, or nobody nothing. nobody was written up nobody nobody got anything um i mean we all thought we were going to have it handed to us uh you know obviously you know the guard chief could have been uh he was a he, re he ended up being retired first sergeant um, but he was in beirut uh drill instructor Hardcore recon, double dog, double dog. <laughs> you know, had that low voice, you know. Um, well respected man, though. I uh, I respected that guy uh, dearly. We had our differences. Uh, being a Marine that was living out on town, I didn't volunteer for anything um, other than like flag, you know, details or burial details or things like that. But off-duty time that you know had something to do around the barracks, you know. I just, I just never volunteered for it unless I thought that, you know, something that really needed to be done. Right. Um, you know, something with my, with my, uh, my junior uh, Marines, you know, something that they, you know, like for our instance, our IG inspections, you know, were pretty important uh, being, you know, the, the importance of the barracks and the history of the barracks. Um, it, was, it was taken very seriously, um, as, as, as most duty stations are, but this one, because it was so white glove, Oh yeah, uh, because of the history. But um, uh, there was an incident that happened one time, um, which showed me what kind of leadership and what kind of marine this guy was. Um, my wife was was horsing around uh, at the time. I was getting ready to back into a shower. 
that had hot scolding water and she threw cold water over the top at me. Of course, I backed away from the cold water into the hot water and stuck my arm through the glass shower door, you know, just pushing to get out. And uh, I'm bleeding everywhere and I'm like, just give me a towel, just wrap it up, just wrap it up. She's frantic. And I said, call the barracks, let them know what's going on. I'm gonna, probably gonna be a little late. We're probably gonna have to go to the hospital or the infirmary on base. And uh, she calls, and we're probably, I would have to say with traffic, probably, you know, 15 minutes away from the barracks. If it was any more than five minutes, I would have been surprised. That's how fast they, you know, and it wasn't, you know, the gunny sending, you know, one of his house mouses or somebody like that. It was him and the assistant guard chief that drove out there, calmed her down, got me taken care of, got me to the infirmary, you know, um, that, that, that just, you know, it's one of the first things that we learned as, 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 as leaders in the Marine Corps, or as, as NCOs in the Marine Corps, um, is, is, you know, take care of our, our personnel first. Right. First and foremost, that's, that has to happen. Yeah. And, you know, re regardless of our differences, uh, you know, and that was really the only thing that he ever really harped on me about was, you know, just not that and not becoming a recon Marine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had, you know, I had the, the, the first class PFT, the expert rifle, the expert pistol, the meritorious mass, meritorious promotions, all, you know, everything. I mean, it was, I was a, you know, won the base superstars competition. Really? Um, you know, he wanted me to, you know, he's like, hey, he corners me one day. He's like, hey, devil dog, you ever thought about being, re you know, recon? I was like, oh, I've thought about it. And he's like, well, uh, you know. Why don't you do it? You know, I was like, well, you know, what do you do? You know, what, 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 what's it involved? He's like, well, you got to be, you know, scuba qualified. I was like, well, that's, that's no problem. I, you know, I like to swim. I like water. He says, jump qualified. I said, jump qualified. Jump out of an airplane? Devil dog, yeah. I said, jump out of an airplane. I was like, not me, Gunny. I'm staying on the ground. But, Why uh, should I go jumping out when it's going to land on all the bag of yeah, chips well, and a I, drink in my hand? True, true story. Uh, not a big fan of heights. Um, repelling after I got used to it and got comfortable with, you know, trying to rig and, and do everything was, was, was good. Um, but that first jump out of a Huey. Um, Fast rope? Yeah. Was, was, I'm looking down going, no. <laughs> and Gunny was up there in the, in the Huey, and he just kicks my feet off the rudder. And, <laughs> you know, and it just it, it comes to you. You know, you got an ombale guy down there. So I think that's, if I remember right, that's what they call it. Yeah. Um, but... Uh, you know, and then and then you really had to warm me up to the spy rigging. <laughs> we no, we didn't lack any training there. Um, we, I never did spy rigging. I looked at that and I said, I'm not doing that. Well, they canceled the first one on us uh, because <coughs> they they unfortunately ran some Marines, uh, 53, I guess, ran some Marines into the side of the mountain in Okinawa. I and, heard about that. Yeah, and they they canceled it all the way across the board, so nobody yeah. was doing it for a while. The pilot so they, was misjudging the whole thing. Yeah. So uh, it wasn't until, you know, a couple of years later that, you know, after the investigation and everything cleared up that they, they did it again. But they, they brought the, the 53 in and, and uh, we got another chance to do it. And yeah, and like did. anything else, until the investigation's over, they freeze everything. Freeze everything, the whole Marine Corps, even, even the actual grunts that, you know, train it and do it, that is a done deal. Yeah. So. Noticed you brought a, a book. Oh, yeah, I got a... You know my life's my life's history in here. Just some of the, just some of the kind of the funny stuff. Oh, look at what you have that you're not supposed to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got to uh, keep some of my ID cards. That, uh, How would you able to do that? Well, we had a lance corporal. Um, I won't. I won't put his name out there. You just never know who's watching. He was an heir to Johnson and Johnson. Oh, really? And uh, yeah, I mean, he was a sharp kid, but he was like the CEO's driver and stuff like that. He was kind of in charge of the uh, the ad, ad, the administrative administrative end um, under under this master sergeant that we had but uh, yeah uh, long story short on on the I don't know if people can see it or if I should even be showing it because <laughs> I even got the red badge from the shipyard that I should have turned in as well they didn't take that away from and we me. all got souvenirs yeah yeah the government will be looking for me tomorrow going hey uh, you want to give those back <laughs> they're not using them anymore but uh, yeah no the first one was uh, was the one I got from boot camp and uh, oh, you graduated PFC, graduated PFC. Um, the small story on that was uh, when I was at uh, infantry training school waiting to be picked up by a company of which <coughs> I was uh, fighting alpha. Uh, the I misplaced my ID card. 
Well, we all know what happens when you, when you do that. Well, I went down to talk to this kid. And everybody called this guy uh, Chesty Plumley. Plumley was his last name. This guy, I don't know how he found him or was able to wear him, but he had these Corafram combat boots. They were Corafram. I don't, <laughs> they weren't spit shine. I mean, these doggone things were just brilliant all the way up. But we called him Chesty Plumley because he, he was just, I don't know, he just kind of reminded everybody of a, a small Chesty, you know, puller. puller. <laughs> and uh, he starts typing on his typewriter. I says, what are you doing? He says, you mis misplaced your ID card. I says, yeah. I says, I, I just want to know what, what I need to do if, if, in fact, I can't find it. And he proceeds to type. I go, what are you doing? He goes, I'm writing you a page 11. I'm like, are you kidding me? It was the only page 11 I ever got in the Marine Corps. I went back to the barracks, and I ripped my sea bag apart. It was still in my sea bag. It just it got slid down somewhere. You know, of course, yeah, it should have been in my wallet or, or what have you, just, but, you know, time running, you know, between uh, leave and everything, it just, just, I just threw it in my sea bag, evidently. But, so they had to, you know, issue me another one when I got to, to uh, Marine Barracks. So did they uh, get rid of the page 11 when you showed it to them? <clears throat> Negative. <laughs> nope, it stayed on my record, unfortunately. I would have, I would have fought it. Um, yeah, you know, you know, that's one of the things. Uh, you know, 19 years old, uh, young Lance Corporal, PFC at that time. Uh, you know, not a whole lot of people are telling you what, what you can do or what you should do. Or, and you would or, think your corporal or sergeant would stamp in and say, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and pull that. Uh, you know, you found it. It was all a misunderstanding. Yeah, yeah, tear it up or, you know. Yeah, um, and that's where that should have stepped in, too. Yeah, this kid was kind of a... He was, I don't know, I guess maybe there was more reason why they called him Chesty Plumley <laughs> than to meet the eye. But, uh, yeah, so I, yeah, I just got, you know, just various cards. This was our, our Chesty's card. We used to be able to run a tab in the barracks, you know, at the chow hall. And uh, we just paid at the end of the week, and, and everything was golden and so forth. And some letterhead that we had back in the day, I don't know exactly how far that went back. Uh, that was in when I was in. I remember that. I know, uh, you know, like our old uh, boot camp books. Right. Um, some of those pictures are the same pictures, you know, Viet at least to the Vietnam era, early yeah. Vietnam era, era. Picture of me with my, my wife at uh, one of the balls. Yeah, we're coming down to our last minute already. Okay. So. But, uh, yeah, just various, just, is that, is, all, is that old salt or what? <laughs> I got my cover all, I was just about ready to get out. <laughs> my cover's all tipped. <laughs> back and to the side but uh no it was good times it was, it was a lot of good times a lot of fun Marine Corps means still as much to me today as, as it ever has I still miss it and I've said that a few times on the show that you know I miss it I still do been out 13 years and been yeah. retired 13 years and I still miss it the camaraderie the yeah. esprit de corps everything the Levinite Club has though yeah you, you can find it all yeah. there absolutely absolutely a lot oh. of great stories a lot of great marines in there oh yeah a lot uh, of good times listening to uh you know some of the guys that have been there long before us that are still around talking you know their time so it's it's great stuff yeah well uh this brings close another episode i want to present you with one of my chips as well thank you very much sir thank appreciate you. it right. thanks for having me on so uh you got a story i want to hear it Give me a call at 513-2917. Uh, That's the new number until I can get it changed on the screen. So I'll see you next week. And remember, you got a story. I want to hear it, and I want to share it with everyone else, just like we did with Mike. So till next week, simplify. Hoorah.